I'm going to add this in on the uh, beginning of the video here, so I'll probably repeat myself slightly. I didn't mention this at the or in my video, so I wanted to post more to make this. Right here was where I first rode on a trail. This is the Sterling Truck Trail. It's right off of I-75. It's not much, but it's something. You park right down here. You can get off and ride. This kind of ends up being a kind of a go through the woods kind of thing. I think it it is intended to connect to that. We rode this way, found out that it was blocked off, and rode back around. This is the first place that I ever went trail riding. We were on these two uh, Honda 230 CRF um, trail bikes that my dad and I had back in the day. I was pretty young. I was probably 16, 17. And this is the first time I'd ever been on a trail trail. And we rode up and around here. It wasn't very far. We rode up because this is deep, deep, deep sand. Uh, we all rode up and around here, around like this. You know, maybe up, I'm trying to remember, but I'm pretty sure we went up and around like this and then around here. And then I think we made it, you know, to here. And we didn't know what we should do because back then, as I mentioned, well, you'll hear in a minute, Michigan was a lot more strict on where you could, uh, where you could ride and what you could do. So we turned around, and if I'm not mistaken... Sterling Truck Trail. This was either blocked off. I'm trying to remember. Because I doubt these people want to have the trails go right through um, right through their home. We, we can see if that's still a thing. Point being is that uh, we turned around because I was still learning. I was still a little tippy on my dirt bike. I grew up on quads. So the transition to a dirt bike was severe. But this is the first trail I ever rode on. Whoopsies. Sorry. This is where I kind of learn the passion of riding off-road and uh yeah so we're we'll hit this again but i wanted to give that little bit of background this is where i right there is where i learned when i was younger how to ride in really deep sand on a dirt bike and it was a trial by fire as any of you have ridden a dirt bike in deep sand know it's the faster you go the more comfortable you are and that's kind of counterintuitive to logic when you're flopping all over the place trying to figure out how to go straight um you don't really think of twisting the throttle and taking off, but really, that's the best way to go through sand. So, uh, this was my trial by fire. This is where I learned when I was younger. And uh, it still holds kind of a special place in my heart, despite Michigan having far better opportunities. This is, uh, my dad rode this in the 70s. Somewhere up in here, I think it was up over in here, him and his buddy went, uh, this was long, you know, literally the 70s. Uh, they got their dirt bikes stuck in a bog, and they said that they were, about ready to leave the dirt bikes and go and walk home because they couldn't get them out. Every step they took, they'd sink again. They had to pick them up. So what they did was they worked together. They got one of their bikes out, and then they went back and got the other bike and both worked together to get both bikes out. And uh, then they rode home. So my dad said that he was considering leaving his Osa back there, back in the woods, because he couldn't get it out. And then they decided, well, we'll team up and get one out at a time. So a little bit of family history there. And like I said, that's where I learned to ride. And... Uh, and then it kind of grew into riding St. Helen. And then it grew into riding Gladwin. And then it grew into exploring up north. And, uh, yeah, so a little bit of history for me here in Michigan. It's a wonderful state. And there's uh, there's an awful lot of opportunity here. So stay tuned. I suppose this is sort of an introduction once of what's to come. Uh, it's a bit of a background into uh, where you can ride in Michigan and uh, some great places to go, some recommendations, and hopefully we'll be showing you guys some rec those recommendations here this year because I am ready to get out and ride. I've had a little bit of hiatus with family and whatnot, so we're going to change that, and we're going to bring you guys along for the ride. So stay tuned, keep watching, like, and subscribe. Thank you all. All right, let's talk about what Michigan has to offer for trails, because I've been riding trails here in Michigan for many, 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 many years, and I feel bad. Before I did YouTube, um, I never really videotaped anything. I had some bad luck. I've never really had great luck with GoPro cameras. It seems like they always, the batteries are just a joke. So I tried that a long time ago, um, but it didn't really work out that great. So I'm going to see if I can figure out something a little better to film with, but for many years, I'd go trail riding and didn't film anything. Um... So, I've put a lot of miles in, in this general area right here. Um, oh boy, uh, Gladwin. Um, this trail network is phenomenal. Um, there's just literal tons. Now, I am using, just so everybody knows, this is uh, Onyx um, Off-Road. Um, Onyx also has a hunting version too, which I have. Um, I think it's well worth the money that you spend if you get out and ride. I think it's 100 bucks a year. And Now, I got this off, this, um, the off-road this year's renewal for 30% off. 
Um, so it was like 69 for the year. To me, that seems, it's pretty darn fair. Now, um, also over here, Houghton Lake, um, I had a friend in, or a, I had a teacher in uh, high school. He, um, a friend, but also my teacher, I was on the SE Baja team and we would have Baja meetings at his cabin. My dad would go, several other, um, like any kids in our class whose parents rode, they went. All of us went. His wife was phenomenal, cooked, um, and all, we always had great food and a great time. And we go trail riding from his cabin, which was in uh, St. Helen area. And uh, so there's just some phenomenal trails in here. One of my favorites, I don't remember exactly where it is. Um, it's probably something that looks, oops, my cursor isn't even in the, there it is. It's probably somewhere in here. It's just this phenomenal switchback, back and forth, routing through the trees. And there's like camber on the corners of the tree in the middle. It's just, it's a trail that can't be explained. And I'm, I'm trying to remember where it was. I think it's somewhere in, in this area right here. Um, I know you had to cross over 75 to get to it. Now, there might be other trails that look like that. There are thousands of miles of trails in Michigan. Uh, there's fire roads. There's um, logging roads. Um, Michigan is just rich with trail opportunities and it's Michigan is sandy um, a lot of Michigan is sandy but you will find mud especially in the spring right now so a lot of people aren't really trail riding right now because it's literally a mud hole um, in a lot of ways um, um, Drummond Island right here is one of the worst for being nasty with mud but uh, so we have Drummond Island and you take a uh, you take a ferry across right here through from detour um, I took my excursion here we rode Let's see here. We went up this trailhead. I think we zigzagged through here, went around like this, I think. And then we ended up over here and around here and we went back. We didn't spend that much time there. It was one of those things my dad and I were driving up for a job in, uh, in Sault Ste. Marie many, many years ago. Uh, this was before I worked with him. I was still in college, but I was off and I went with him to kind of help. I've been kind of helping him since I've been a little kid. We also have evidently a trail, or it looks like actually a road network that you're allowed to ride on. So with with um, the way it works here in Michigan, and, and please don't quote me 100% on this because like I had a bit of a hiatus of riding. I was riding before ORVs were, and like side-by-sides, quads, dirt bikes were as accepted as they are now. Things had gotten a lot better. You would get in trouble for riding once you got off the trail, like, you weren't supposed to like ride on any roads and if you did anything that was even slightly questionable they'd pop you and uh you'd get a ticket or whatever so it's gotten a lot more friendly where there's certain roads that you're literally allowed to ride on period like you're welcome to be there i'm talking paved roads to get from point a to point b um so i'm kind of in, i'm in the upper right now i'm just kind of going through i and <laughs> what's funny is i I had a kind of a whole plan for this video. Uh, the point of it was, was I went through with the Onyx mapping and marked places that I knew of that um, were good places to go. So I knew about this uh, parking area here in Paradise. I wanted to ride this trail network more. My dad and I rode um, from basically there. We rode, um, I'm pretty sure we rode up like this and then we ended up taking this road here to go up to this road and then to get onto this road, or maybe it was this one. And then we cut over, went around here and around and around. And then the next day we went over a little bit farther. So this trail network over here is kind of pop, uh, patchy. It's more of these kind of remote cabins that are on these back roads. And uh, it's not exactly as traily as you might like. However, this... Uh, this road here near, um, well, sort of near Deer, Deer Park, but um, uh, I'm trying to remember what this trail network is called because my brain is short-circuiting, and I'm sorry, guys. Um, this is a, um, a very, very cool trail network. I'm trying to remember what it's called. Please it's the Two-Hearted Trail, um, Doug. Okay. So what I'm getting at here is I marked places that I knew of where trailheads were, and this is also a campground, so I marked that. So basically, when I zoom out, if I'm the summertime when it gets to be more like, hey, we're let's go riding this weekend, I can zoom out and say, where do I want to go? Now, these are some places that we explored a while ago. Right here is Lake Michigami, um, and it's just beautiful here. I highly, highly, highly recommend staying at this uh, Van River State Park campground. If you uh, zoom out here, I'll keep my cursor where it is. It's outside Champion. So this is uh, Wisconsin, then you have the Upper Peninsula right here, 
it's about right there. Uh, it is phenomenal. They have excellent bathrooms. They have excellent, uh, we tented. Um, in fact, we stayed, um, here's the bathrooms. We stayed at this corner spot right uh, right here. This is where we, te we tented. Um, we were going bear hunting in the area and we stayed there, um, which was awesome in a tent. It was just, oh, good times. So I highly recommend if you want to go to a awesome campground, they have a playscape. Um, I'm trying to remember here. I think it's right over here. Um, but they have a playscape in the woods. All these are really tall, relatively old growth, uh, trees. Uh, there's plenty of shelter from wind and from rain and whatever. Uh, this is an awesome beach right here. Very cool. And this lake is massive. We wanted to take a boat up this year and go play around the lake, but it is just a huge, huge place. Uh, Michigan has just got some awesome camping and hunting. And uh, now up here, a little sparse on deer. Um, they have really cold winters and also, too, predation is a huge problem. Um, my puppy is being a puppy. Um, so here's another, uh, trail, uh, I'm trying to remember here. Yep. Here's another campground slash trailhead that I marked. So I know where to go over here is absolutely phenomenal. This is the port where the porcupine mountains are. Uh, this is Lake of the clouds right here. Um, if I remember correctly, yep. Lake of the clouds. So, uh, this is a parking area where you go, you can drive your vehicle all the way up here and park here. And then you go for a little walkie walk over here to overlook Lake of the clouds. Uh, they have an awesome set. If you're a hiker, just top notch uh this is 1800 feet uh 1400 feet um you know, michigan is basically a 600 foot or so so these are relatively 1500 feet 1578 this is some seriously some serious terrain so uh um keep that in mind if you want to go hiking there's some serious elevation change here uh there's no riding in here that i know of uh these are all walking trails uh, and there's, and I think these are like ranger stations, campsites. So, uh, I'll bet you can hike daily, you know, they're spaced out for like a day's walk or whatever. So you can walk around this place and camp. Uh, these are not right. Uh, Porcupine, um, Mountain State Park is not a riding area that I know of. It's all walking, um, and you can drive your vehicle to points of interest, of course, but, uh, but there's just tons of opportunity around here. These green lines are all ORV trails uh and there's just tons and tons we came into uh this town right here Berglund, which is really nice little it's an older town but it's a very nice town they had good food you know, i think we got a pizza there at one of the bars uh this is a beautiful lake and supposedly the stir i think they said sturgeon and muskie fishing here uh if i'm not mistaken but there's also also game fish and stuff like that i wanted to come up here and go fish this i'm not a big fisherman i enjoy fishing i'm not a good fisherman i was looking for land there's a there's a piece of land for sale right over here that i really wanted um maybe when land prices start dropping we can start looking at that again there's just phenomenal trails in here these are a lot of elevation change um rocky sandy mix of dirt in there too um we rode I don't know, in a couple days we rode, I think it was three days, and we rode probably five or 600 miles, um, and we didn't even scratch the surface. They rode, so my better half and I, I feel bad about this, so my buddy, he had at the time uh, a really high horsepower Polaris uh, Razor 1000 XP, and it had a tune and clutches and all kinds of fancy stuff. It was, it was, a, it was a nice machine, uh, and he brought that. My buddy had just gotten a brand new Can-Am X3, XRS, so basically the baddest bitch around, and uh, so they had two great machines. I, we had just had our kid, um, and I bought a house not that much long ago, so I wasn't in a position to buy a side by side. So we brought up my old Polaris, which I mean isn't that old to 2011, but it has 1,300 miles, and probably 800, 900 miles of those are hard trail miles. Just beating the snot out of it when I was younger. Um, and my better half has a uh, TRX 250. Well, air-cooled Honda four-wheeler, um, and that's just what she had even well before we were a thing. Um, she had that through her childhood. I think it's like 2011 or something like that. Um, not childhood, but you know what I'm saying. She had her, they had two of them for their family. Uh, we took that, and it was a bit much for that machine. Being two-wheel drive, these are some serious grades on these trails, uh, and the mix of rock and deep sand. I ended up riding it, and I'm a big boy on a 250 air-cooled machine, it was a workout keeping that little thing going. And then she rode my 850 because you can, that thing, you just put it in four-wheel drive and point it in the direction you want to go, and it just goes there. It's an amazing sportsman's and, uh, you know, outlanders are 
phenomenal, phenomenal machines. They're trail riding monsters. You can go almost anywhere you want. Um, they're pretty reliable. I would broken an axle shaft on the right when I got stuck in a mud hole. It was by accident. I was watching my buddy bomb through with his X3, and he, um, I was looking behind me, and I wasn't watching where I was going, and I drove straight into the middle of a mud hole, and I was watching him bomb through the mud hole I had already gone through, and needless to say, I buried it. And I broke an axle shaft trying to get out of it when I winched myself out. So, have a winch, ride with a buddy so you have something to hook onto. I hooked onto a tree. I mean, I wasn't really that stuck. It was just one of those things where it was, where it was high centered on mud. Someone went through there with like 35s in their Jeep or something and made some ruts. I should have been paying attention. I should have checked the water before I went in. It's on me. Those are mistakes you make. This, uh, this, uh, seven hour plane crash trail, I think it's called. Yeah, seven hour plane crash trail. This thing runs from way down here. Uh, into Wisconsin and runs all the way up all the way up into um, past Houghton we went here for our Baja winter Baja race to the um, to the uh, Michigan Tech here in Houghton and then this guy runs all the way up into um, the top of the Keweenaw so this is a trail I've wanted to do they rode they only made it I think to about here uh, what I was getting at here those two those two machines were fantastic and I was kind of holding them back hope and I were holding them back on our slow machines so we took the day we went on the explored looked at land we went up here to Porcupine Mountains and we went to uh Lake of the Clouds like I was just saying you come down here and uh you come down this road a little bit right here on this river it's called uh Rainbow Falls right here if I'm not mistaken I think that's oh Bonanza Falls my bad Bonanza Falls, and then there's uh, Rainbow Falls somewhere around here. We went in, uh, I don't know, you know what, maybe a bit, um, Rainbow Falls was farther down. Anyway, we went to Bonanza Falls, we went to several other things, we drove over here, because we had made it, we were staying over here, I'm sorry for jumping all around here, guys. We were staying, where's my thing, we were staying at a house over here, um, we were staying at a house, didn't I mark that? Oh, come on, you dumb dumb. Anyway, we were renting a house over, and I'm trying to think of the name when it pops up here, uh, you know, in this general area, Ed, or Edwin, or whatever the heck that is, Sidnaw, Covington. Oh boy, there's just so much. There's so, this is just an expanse. Mass City, okay. We were outside Mass City. See, I thought I marked it. We had to ride this trail. Is it just trail, or is that a road? Seven hour plane crash trail. Yeah, I think we took this because it was a logging place that you drove by. I'm trying to remember here. Where's Mass City? Greenland. Yeah, it was outside Greenland in Mass City. Right here. There was a railroad and a... Right here? No? I'm trying to remember how we got there. Lake Maine. What I was looking for. I distinctly remember a railroad to load up logs and I'm trying to see where that is is that it depot street that sounds no all right guys well I need to do a little bit more homework here uh evidently point and I'm just trying to go back on memory here right now and is this a logging operation Looks like it. Yep, here it is right here. Yep, you cross over. Here it is. You cross over. So this is the trail we took. You cross over top of the railroad tracks. You cross over top again. You go past their loading operation here, and you come into town. So we were riding on part of the plane crash trail, seven-hour plane crash trail, and I'm trying to remember. We were off on this little side road um, over in this general, I think in this general area right here. It was an awesome Airbnb for riding. You should look up Airbnbs. Uh, you can stay uh, some towns have uh campgrounds specifically or camp cabin things that you can rent but also just do an airbnb and uh, generally the owners are really cool about it especially if you're not there ripping up their property if you're just dropping your trailer or i mean you leave your truck there stay at the place and you leave there you ride away from, or you ride from it we would ride into mass city every morning get top off on fuel so we aren't using our fuel tanks in case we needed them um our f extra fuel cans would you chill layla good lord um and we would ride out from there now um, this, I think, is a pretty gnarly section of trail right here, if I'm not mistaken, coming out of Mass City, yeah. I'm pretty sure the 7-Hour Plane Crash Trail has some hefty, um, hefty, um, 
grades and stuff, because I'm pretty sure this is the nasty part that we took out of town. Uh, irregardless, um, this is just, you could just get totally lost in here over a period of days and just have, see a new trail every single day. For instance, if you, I mark this campsite right here. Yeah, seven hour campground or seven, uh, campground for seven hour trail. Uh, that's why I called it. Just look at the, you could go, you know, south one day down se the seven hour plane crash trail. You could go east an or uh, east another day and kind of wrap around through here. You go west another day, come way over here. I mean, you could find yourself just all over the place. And then you go north. I mean, you're, if I'm not mistaken, the, se here, the seven hour plane crash trail says um, total distance of 245 miles. Um, Highest point, 1,800 feet. Lowest point, 602. So that's basically the level of Michigan. 580, 600 is basically the level of uh, Michigan. Elevation uh, gain. I mean, you're just up and down and up and down. Look at that. 12, 1,300 feet. I mean, you're just... Um, and evidently, this is uh, also for um, uh, Jeeps or, you know, four-wheel drives, which is cool. Uh, and this guy, like I said, will take you, and this is just a massive area. I'm looking to see if Onyx Map has a distance, map tools, draw a line, measure distance here. I just measure here to here. Just, that's 76 miles just going up the Keweenaw. Um, it's a huge state. I mean, Michigan is just massive. If you drive from Detroit, just say you're from Detroit, if you drive from Detroit over here to the other side of the upper where we went. So there's also phenomenal trails over here, uh, a little farther past. This is all, if I'm not mistaken, trailhead. So these are a bunch of trailheads. We rode all the way over here. Um, I think, oh, no, no, we drove all the way over here. We used, I think it was actually this trailhead right here. Uh, that looks familiar because we came in on this road with our truck and trailer. Rainbow Falls, There, that's where it is. So, uh, um, there's Rainbow Falls. I was just saying that. So there's just tons of amazing waterfalls. And there's another place we went. Um, I'm trying to remember what falls it was. And obviously you guys have around my YouTube channel. Go and look when I made the video about the waterfalls of the Upper Peninsula. That's what I'm talking about right now. So go watch the other video on that. Um, this is just a phenomenal area right here. And, uh, we were pretty close to, um, pretty sure it's called Iron. The Town of Iron. Um, right? Town of Iron? Come on. Maps. It's just so much to remember. I mean, I'm trying to be helpful to you guys. It's just, the amount of space here is just insane. Um, at any rate, there's trails all up and down and through here, around here. Um, there's just plenty to see. You got trail, uh, you know, a trail network here. Um, and obviously, you get down here toward, um, well, not really by Escanaba, but way west of Escanaba. Um, no, because Escanaba's way over here. But this whole area on the border of Ironwood, and then there's, I think there's Iron over here, too. I'm trying to remember. Ironwood is in, uh, I think it's in Wisconsin. <sighs> anyway, I'm doing the best I can here, guys, calling upon two years ago's memory. Uh, we've been, like I said, a little bit of a hiatus on riding just from being busy, and I'm hoping to change this here in the future, and if it all works out, we'll have that on the channel. Um, Iron Mountain. Yeah, so there's Escanaba down here. I don't think that there's that much for trails. There's some down here. Uh, there's just tons and tons of trails, and then the Hiawatha National Forest is this massive part that goes all the way from uh, Munising straight down here, all the way down here. Uh, one of the places I wanted to explore, uh, let's see here, we got Escanaba over here. I wanted to explore this general region over here, which I mean, there's just so much. Just tons and tons and tons and tons. But uh, I meant to mark more parking areas here before I made the video, but um, so we went over that trail or that parking area. We got the, the campground here, which there don't seem to be, so that uh, Van River State Park, a little bit of warning, they don't seem to be super ATV friendly. Uh, so you may want to, um, maybe they'll be side-by-side -side friendly. They seem to be very, we went there with a quad so we could ride part way back into the woods to bear hunt and then get off and walk and walk a bunch more uh, just to get the hardest parts out of the way. Um, so evidently there's another trailhead right here for this bit of trail. TH would mean trailhead. Uh, you got campsites. Um, 
all marked. I think this is a really phenomenal tool. I'm not, I would love to say that I have a, um, you know, a link for you guys to get a discount. Um, keep growing my channel and I will be sure to provide you guys with discount links and everything if you can do that for me by hitting subscribe and hitting the like button. I would be more than happy to provide you guys with discounts in any way I possibly can for you to enjoy outdoors. Um, anything to get everyone out. Um, but uh, right now I'm too small a channel to go and be like, hey, Onyx, give me a discount code. I would love to hook you guys up. Um, I think this is a pretty awesome program, but like I said, I'm, I don't have it. Uh, the 30% off was just something they were giving out to everybody. It wasn't anything special. So um, I highly recommend that you, if you're into off-roading at all, um, or if you're a hunter, you should really have Onyx in general because it'll save your duff when you get lost. Um, when it gets dark, if you're in cattails or if you're in corn or if you're in... Uh, if you're in the woods, man, if it's dark, everyone made fun of Upchurch and uh, uh, who the heck was the other uh, country rapper kid who bought a piece of land and them two went for a walk through the woods and got lost, supposedly. Uh, and I think it was 70 or 80 acres. Like, it's easy to do. When it gets dark, it's hard to see. So there's even trails down here right as you cross the bridge into St. Ignace. Um, another thing to just the opportunities are phenomenal in Michigan. So I'm going to leave Michigan just for a second because obviously I live here. This is why I made the channel. And if you watched any of the videos before, one of the kind of goals that I was trying to accomplish when I first made the channel was I wanted to share trailheads. I know that, that sounded kind of like goofy, but like people need to know where they can park the crap, what they can expect. Well, if their wife or girlfriend needs to go to the bathroom, would they expect that trailhead to have a bathroom? Is it clean? That kind of thing. Like those are questions that are perfectly reasonable to answer. So, um, like I said, there's just tons and tons and tons of trails in Michigan, which is great. We do not have uh, basically anything in the thumb. Uh, and over here, I mean, I'm, I don't know of really any. These are all kind of protected wildlife kind of things. Um, you can uh, you can duck hunt at this one. That I do know because I knew people who did. Um, but I don't know of them being... Uh, I'm assuming you can take a vehicle through these. I never explored. I worked in Holland over here for um, a good while. What are we doing here? South Haven, Port Sheldon, Grand Haven, Grand Rapids, right here, Holland, duh. I worked in Holland over here on 112th Street for a long time during college, and so I frequented the beach over here. So if you're in the area, you should really consider going around here. First of all, it's a nice little drive. And if you like boats at all, there's just tons of boats, and there's a, um, there's a marina and all that fun stuff. This is a nice place. I go for walks in here. Um, on this area, they have walking trails and stuff. That was great. Uh, and the beach here was really nice. The people are nice. Uh, you can drive right out here, park in this giant parking lot, and you're good to go. If you're a boater, this is a really protected harbor. There's a really beautiful red lighthouse that lives right... Whoopsies. Sorry, guys. Uh, there's a really beautiful red lighthouse that lives right here. Um, it's very cool to see. Actually, it's right here, dum-dum. These are just your uh, entrance lights. It's right here. But um, Makatawa Bay is really cool. If you have a boat, you may want to you may want to visit there. Uh, Michigan has just got some just incredible opportunities for your entertainment. Uh, Saugatuck Dunes down here um, are great. There's all kinds of dune rides. Like you can ride trucks that are outfitted to take you around the dunes. That's great. I did that when I was a kid. Very cool. Um, now up in here is very, very pretty over on the west coast of Michigan. All sandy beaches, not very many rocks. It's really, really pretty. Whereas on our side of it, the east side of Michigan, the more rocky. Um, so Harbor Springs over here is really pretty, which is right here. You come riding down here, and then you button hook around here, and you're in Harbor Springs Harbor, which is a nice little protected place. They have sailing here. It's, uh, it's a nice environment. It's definitely a ritzy environment. I feel a little bit out of place here. Um, just because I'm not a very ritzy person. I've always just kind of worn blue jeans and boots and, you know, Carhartt shirts like everybody else. I don't really have a... I'm not a very fancy person, so I kind of feel a little bit out of place there. But So there's tons of trails over here, and I don't remember what these trails are called. Um, these are things that I'd like to ride, and we'll take you guys there. Um, the Little O and the Big O are down here, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Over here by... Oh, what the heck is it? Manistee? Uh, somewhere around here, you have the Little O and the Big O that are good for dirt bikes. I do have a friend who has a cabin over here, and he frequents the, uh, the Little O and the Big O, which I think I might have marked. So here's a parking place that I marked, and I'm trying to remember if it shows here. It's generally pretty good about showing. So, as I mentioned at the beginning, 
Some of these trails are like trail trails, but other ones are like logging roads. And they're a little bit bigger, so you can take a truck down through it. Uh, but they're also really fun on a dirt bike or a quad because you can, or side by side because you can go quickly and drift the corners and that kind of thing. So uh, there's, and it's maybe it's not so much about tight, twisty trails. It's more about seeing nature and uh, seeing, uh, well, nature includes wildlife and trees and, you know, that kind of thing. So there's Michigan has a whole lot of logging roads because a lot of our a huge part of our economy is paper and and um, you know, tree related things. So we have just tons and tons and tons. Uh, let me jump back here for a second. So Weyerhaeuser and other paper brands own a metric crap ton of. I was just brought you over here to this area over here. All in here and especially over here. These are show to be you know, not state lands, but this is all um, privately owned by corporations and they allow you to go hunting and stuff in here. So this huge area that looks like a vacuum and nothing going on, this is a massive, massive area of area, of area you can go ride in, you can go camping, you can go hunting in. It's privately owned land, but it's owned by Weyerhaeuser and they, or other paper brands and they tell the DNR that you guys can go there. So keep that in mind. Um, do your research on that. As much like out west where you have like um, BLM land, I think it's called, where it's not necessarily state or federal land. It's other kinds of land that you can go on. Um, so scrolling back out, I like I said, I made some marks for trailheads that I've either know of or been to or whatever. Um, you should know too, over here is the elk viewing area, west of Gay or east of Gaylord. Um, this, all these trails here, this is where the elk were planted here in Michigan. Michigan always had elk and uh, they were hunted and they lost land due to, um, well, they were being hunted, and they also had a hard time surviving because, uh, you know, humans would cut things down. They didn't have shelter. They didn't have food. Uh, nevertheless, because this is really sandy territory, so um, there's it's slim pickings up here. You're deer hunting in this area. So Atlanta has pretty decent deer. They have a lot more. You can see overhead how many more farm fields they have. See all these colors right here? A lot more farm fields in this area. Around Royston, decent hunting. Um Hillman, uh, let's see here, uh, and of course by Atlanta, which is over here, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I'm scrolling through a whole bunch of stuff here, uh, Atlanta's somewhere right, right here, so a lot of farmland here, uh, you can see how many, how much ag there is, uh, versus wood, so you can kind of tell these are trees, um, and then we, there's just tons of ag in this area, and the ag is really what drives a huge amount of population growth, um, it's unnatural food, but then it's helping the animals survive. So you kind of play that when you're a hunter. You try to be by ag because you're going to have just a crap ton of uh, healthy animals. Whereas when they're trying to survive in a swamp, um, this area here, you know, you have lowland, highland, more swamp. What in the world is this? Um, ow. Layla, keep your claw off me. Um, oh, I looked at buying this piece of property right here. Um right here on the side of this lake. So this is um, this is a piece of state land. It's just got a little trail through it that is blocked off. You can't take side-by-sides anymore, but you can walk it. Uh, there's a boat, lamp, boat ramp right here, Lake Emma. It's a nice little place that um, that was for sale, and I was I walked it and looked at the home and stuff like that, and it ended up being not quite what we were looking for, which is fine. Nice guy, though. Um, phenomenal gentleman um, in a really cool area. But, um, yeah, so there's just... Just tons and tons and tons of trails. Now, as I said, we're at 30 minutes now. And uh, for you guys who want to, um, who have stuck around, thank you. And please like and subscribe. I'll try and take what we've talked about here and turn it into riding videos. But I wanted to give you guys kind of a background of Michigan itself. So I think what we'll do, because we're already at 30 minutes, is I'm going to stop this. I'm going to make another video and we're going to talk about out-of-state riding. Okay? Sounds good. Thank you all. Please remember to like and subscribe. You guys are amazing, and I hope you guys help me grow the channel because I really like to bring this into. Um, there are other, obviously, riding channels and stuff like that, but I think that we can come at an avenue of family-friendly fun as opposed to just high horsepower ripping and that kind of thing, um, and also just not family fun. Try and make this family fun, family camping, family outdoor activities um, that you can watch with your kids, and we can all do it together here. Um, yeah, family to family, let's have fun. Take care of yourselves.